Hello, Spark fans, and welcome back to Advancing Spark, where I want to talk about the Databricks Marketplace. Now, this is brand new in public preview. You can go and have a play with it. You may have noticed if you've been inside your Databricks workspace recently, there'll be a whole banner at the top saying, hey, come and try the Databricks Marketplace. But what is it? Why do you care? What does it mean? How do you use it? How do you even start? How do you actually put data on it? So many questions, and we're going to talk through all of those today, basically giving you a bit of a kickstart to the Databricks marketplace. As always, if you are new around here, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you are after some premium online self-paced training, don't forget we've got the Spark Fans discount code, and I'll put the link down in the description below. But enough of that, let's talk about the marketplace. So firstly, what is it? I mean, the idea of data monetization or turning your data into a product and selling it has been around for a little while now. It's kind of been a this nirvana on so many people's data strategies. Now, hands up, who has that as a tick box item on their data strategy that you've never done? Come on, I want to see those hands raising. Admit it. Uh, you can lie to yourself, but not to me. Um, it's a big thing that everyone's always dreamed about. You've spent so much of your time turning your data into something that is pristine and clean and has amazing value for your internal stakeholders. And you're like, well, surely other people would want to pay for this. Surely we can make some money off this. But then the whole effort of actually getting it somewhere in a reliable place where people can reliably go and download it and subscribe to updates and work with it and having a mechanism to pay for it always ends up just a little bit too much. It's quite rare we see people doing this successfully, to be honest. So the Databricks Marketplace is tackling exactly that. There's two different sides to it. There's a load of data which is just free. So people who've made some data and they like want to put it out in the world to say, you know what, this needs to enrich people's lives. I want to make this data available so people make better decisions. We can share things about the environment. We can collaborate on research projects. We can do all of that. But also companies going, Hey, I can make money off my data. Why don't I put my data up there and allow people to download it from there? That's what the Databricks Marketplace is. It's a sharing space where people can register data and then other people can pay or for free download that data and go and work with it immediately, easily, straight through Databricks. That's the plan. So we've heard lots about it. It was announced originally at the Data AI Summit last year. And then things have kind of gone quiet. We've not really seen anything else from Databricks on it since then. So it's really good that we finally now got a preview version that we can go and have a play. So there's blogs and intro elements. You can go and see how things are working. There's various different customer testimonials. You can go and see what's actually happening. Lots of people kind of starting to seed it with this first cut amount of data. So even in this public preview mode, there's still a ton of data on there from a load of providers and we're only expecting that number of providers to grow as people start using it as more and more partners go and approach databricks and say hey could could, could our data go on there as well so hoping we're going to see loads and loads more things go on it now it is based on delta sharing which makes entire sense that's like a nice step protocol right you they've built an open sharing protocol they've established a way through unity catalog of you being able to host a Delta sharing server and manage your Delta data shares, manage your recipients, manage all of that. And now this is just the other side of providing an open marketplace for people to connect into the shares that you've produced. Makes entire sense. So what that means is if from the data provider side of things, you just need to set up the various Delta tables. You need to have Unity Catalog. You need to register those tables as shares within Unity Catalog. I know on the other side, Databricks does the rest, which is really, really cool. A low maintenance way of sharing data out into the world just makes sense. So lots of stuff going on, loads of information and blogs and documentation and all that kind of thing. Uh, lots of things in there in terms of how you get started. Now, I guess there's, there's two sides of things, right? There's how do I use it as a consumer? I just want data. How do I get data into my Databricks workspace so I can start working with it? And then there's how do I, as a partner or a, you know, an organization who's got some data, 
How do I get that listed? Now, we'll do the latter first, just because it's really quick and easy. If you have data you want to have registered with it, essentially, there's a Databricks Data Partner Program. You need to have data in your Databricks account. You need to have Unity Catalog on it. And you need to go and apply. And then there's a whole form you fill in. And then you talk to Databricks about it. And then you go from there. That's about all I can actually tell you about what that program is. But if you have data and you would like to monetize it or you'd like to share it with the world for free and you want to be involved, just follow those links. So I'll put the link down below, apply into that data partner program and you can follow the process from there. But for the other side of things, if you're a consumer and you want some data, it's not so bad. So let's have a look what we can, what can we do? We go up here. So how do consumers get access to data? Well, it's turned on by default. It's a thing that's just inside of uh, a data workspace when you log in. Now I will give a word of warning. So I logged in early today. I was like, okay, this is, this is cool. Uh, I, I, I mean, I've already clicked on my little banner at the top, so it's gone away. Um, but I had this little marketplace uh, thing come up. So automatically in every single Databricks workspace, you'll now have that little marketplace button come up and it'll be flagged as new and users can see it and go and have a look. And you can see just a load of data you have like providers in here and you can go and search providers and have a look at various different things. Now, the thing that hit me is I came in and there were no data products. And I was like, well, well there's, there's, there's no data anywhere. How, how is this useful? Is there's no data anywhere. And it's because I hadn't read the documentation. This workspace is not Unity Catalog enabled. So I actually went back and said, okay, right, how, do we, how does this actually work? Before you begin, see, I missed that step. <laughs> Before you begin, you need to have an Azure Databricks account or other platforms of using AWS or GCP. It has to be premium. You cannot have it if you're on a standard uh, Databricks workspace. You have to have Unity Catalog. So there has to be a meta store. Your workspace has to be enabled. You have to be plugged into it. You need permissions to actually then use it. So I was just on the, the, the initial falling at the first hurdle of I hadn't actually read the docs and turned things on. So make sure you have a premium workspace. Make sure you've got Unity Catalog. Make sure your permissions on Unity Catalog. They are the requirements. That is what you need if you're going to use Databricks Marketplace. After that, super easy. So let's ignore that workspace because that wasn't UC enabled. I've got my advancing Unity. There you go. You can see our nice little banner at the top saying, okay, go and get started with uh, Marketplace. Click that button. It takes us to the Marketplace. Now I can get the same bits of information. I get some picks of various different bits of uh, information from there. I can dig into those ones that we're looking at that had no data products in. Lo and behold, there's a load of data products in there. So essentially, it's I can browse my free products. I can go and have a look at various things. This is giving me a full list of all various things that are in there, including a which tag of which ones are free. Now, there is not a transaction processing element baked into Databricks. So these ones are not free. If I take some financial data, I want to go to the Bright Query uh, data set. I can go, OK, what is what is the data? I can get some documentation they've provided. And I have to go and request it. So essentially, the way it works currently, if I want to try and purchase some data, I request access. That essentially sends me a form. I send that off to them. They get back to me. We talk about invoicing. When we're all sorted on and I've paid, they go, tick, you've now got access. Next time I come in, I will be able to use that immediately. So essentially, kind of, the, the, they are not building a payment transaction platform here. This is just a data sharing platform where you can choose it's either free and it'll just work straight away, or you can contact them, negotiate, talk about pricing, agree it, get turned on, and then when you come back in, it'll work. For now, let's just do the nice, easy, free one. Let's go, what free data sets have I got? And honestly, there's quite a few. There's a lot, there's a lot of data here that we can use for free. So I was having a play around, I was looking at a few different ones. What can we go? Uh, I'm going to go for hip and knee joint conditions and complication rates. That sounds like a really cheerful data set. So John Snow Labs have put out a ton of medical data sets for people to go and use to train various different things. You might be using it to train a ML model. You might be able to use it to augment 
uh, an existing data set with a load of new features so you can then actually improve your models. You might be using it to do another piece of analysis and trend uh, analytics. Lots of different things you can do. So this is instantly available. So I have been enabled for pricing on this. If I had paid for it and they ticked me, that's the same thing I'd see. Because this is free, we can just go in and work with it immediately. Okay, get instant access. So this is saying you're going to get access to this data set. It's going to add it as a new catalog inside of Unity Catalog, and I'll then be able to use it. So I'm going to say, yes, that is fine. You can tell John Snow Labs that I'm grabbing some of their data just so I'm upside for their TNCs. There we go. The data is now available in the provided catalog. I can just go and open that data set. I can go and have a browse over in my data side of things, and I can now see John Snow Labs hip knee joint conditions and complication rates. That beautifully named catalog uh, is now available inside my unit catalog. I've got the, my schema inside there, and I've got the full data set. That's the important thing to know is we're not just talking about one table of data. Whenever we are signing up to something in the Databricks marketplace, we're actually signing up to a full Delta share. And that can have databases, tables, or schemas and tables, and lots of different things in there. So I can say, well, actually, what is going to be in this data? I've noticed the first time you click on it, it doesn't tend to actually show you anything. If we dig into it again, come on, you can do it. Again, the first time I went in, it basically couldn't find any data. I think because it's doing the initialization via the Del uh, Delta share, it just didn't let me see it. Let me see what we can do. There we go. So it takes a little, a little moment for it to actually come through. Go talk to the Delta sharing server. Go through that protocol and receive the information back. So give it a moment when you've done things. Don't be as impatient as I am clicking around. But you can see we've got these various different data sets have now actually been spun up. I can go and create a notebook. I've got a cluster turned on. Yeah, there we go. Do a quick select star. Ooh, let's not select some data. Mm, yes, run that. I'm going to write a SQL query on some data we didn't previously have access to. We've not had to load it into any of our lakes. I've not had to do a copy. I've not had to build it as a Delta table locally. I can just go and query that data directly. That data is still held on the Jon Snow Labs side of things, being served up via their Delta sharing server going through Unity Catalog. So I can just immediately start using it from that Data Explorer because it's a free set to click. Yeah, I'd like that one, please. Next, next, next. And then I can just go and start working in it. Now, thankfully, I can these days rename catalogs. So don't worry, it will create things with a fairly chunky name. <laughs> but you can then rename the catalog. You can rename the database and then you can work with those tables however you want. Um, what I've not tried, certainly rename the catalog should be fine. I've not tried doing anything once you've renamed the database or renamed the tables to say if that then still respects the Delta share and how all that fits together. We can have a play with those things. But as a, a base way of working and saying, look, what free data is there that says about this? Oh, look, here's a huge ton of free data and you can just start working with it. It's really, really, really cool. And if you imagine that next step of thousands of different organizations going, oh, that data is really cool. Now, I'm not sure I want to pay for it. Oh, there's a free sample of their data. Click, click, instantly installed. Check with the data, work with it, go, okay, that's really valuable. I'm going to go and request access. That creates a little workflow. They get a form, you send them payment details, they pay for the data, you enable them, and then they then have access. That is a really, really, really nice story for actually selling your data, for providing services, for making data available to people to help out research and experimentation, all those things. It's great. So, yeah, I, I'm fairly excited by just how easy that is once you are on a ah, workspace that actually has Unity Catalog enabled. Would have made my life a lot easier if I'd actually read that stuff earlier. And that's it. That is all I wanted to talk about in this section, just basically showing you that click a button, click some data, click OK, and then you can suddenly start accessing it if you have UC enabled, is a very, very cool, very, very slick way of working. Really good that there's no data copying happening and it's all just quick live query enabled through Delta sharing. And yeah, I'm hoping we're going to see loads, loads more 
evolutions and advancements based on that because it's a really cool idea. All right, all right, all right, I'll calm down. Just, it's impressive, right? So that's all for me today. So as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to hop on the online training and use the Spark Fans discount for 10% off either of our courses. There's a Spark Fundamentals and there's a machine learning course up there currently with a Delta course soon to come when I'm actually at home for more than a day or two and can actually record it. That's the plan. And then, yeah, I'll catch you next time. Cheers.